I'm the last talk of the day, so don't expect uh, to have too much deep things. Also, I'm going to talk about deep learning, but uh, well, we have a quiet talk. Uh, there will be two parts, because uh, I expect to, to have a slot of 45 one hour or so far. I have put two topics. One topic is uh, what is the relation between uh, info, uh, artificial intelligence and uh, information theory, what information theory can tell about artificial intelligence, and I will get into a more involved uh, part about uh, learnability. Last, uh, something which is relatively new, are all problems learnable? That's a question that uh, we are all asking ourselves. So first, if I want to continue the discussion we have with uh, your talk, that uh, basically uh, one question that uh, Stephen Hawking asked uh, himself and to uh, the other people, uh, what will happen if artificial intelligence, since it's based on the technology, uh, not bio biotechnology, but uh, in electronic technology, it is supposed to be faster, what will happen if uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, supersedes human and uh, basically uh, will be the end of civilization? And even worse, maybe the end of our job, or research job, researcher. So that's a question. This is a very important topic, uh, more for the young people because for people my age, it's less important. But so, but will basically will tell information. The first thing that intelligence uh, intelligence says tells is the fact that a system cannot evolve by itself into a more sophisticated, complex system. Because basically, the entropy of the future of the system, since the future system is a function of the system itself, the entropy will be smaller. It can only, the entropy can only decrease. Therefore, you cannot expect that if there is a, basically a program in a computer which is just working with itself, it evolves from itself, it will not be going to do something better than it was doing before. The only way to make a system, an automaton, uh, to create an automaton which is uh, more complex than the, the original one, when you introduce entropy from outside. From entropy, it could be randomness, it could be data, data set, and basically it was Artificial intelligence is doing. It's just collecting huge data and try to converge into a system that will be better aligned with what it's expected uh, to do on this data. So, for the point of view of art, uh, information theory, it's as if basically you add to your original system randomness. And there is an equivalent in uh, uh, is life evolution. Life evolution has worked from simple system into more complex system. Ourselves, but there are animals are more complex than ourselves. In, in fact, it's very surprising. The birds are more complex than mammals. They are not doing math, but they, 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 are, they are more complex. In fact, we don't know, these are not doing math. But, uh, and uh, the mutations are mostly random. And the beginning was a uh, mutation from cosmic radiation, also from virus. Virus are not random, but uh, they, 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 these are the mutations. And what happened? Of course, evolution selects the best species. The problem, here is the main problem, what does it mean, best species? The best question is who does survive the competition? It's a little uh, tautological. But uh, it may be tautological, but uh, the result, you can see the result uh, every day when we walk in the forest, uh, you can see that basically the system where we arrive is very complex. I think the human is somewhere. In general, we always put the human at the top of the evolution, so there, but. Uh, there is no reason that it should be at the top of the evolution. So what will 
Is it possible to apply this model, the model of life evolution, to the evolution of codes? Basically, the artificial intelligence is how codes can evolve to something more complex, more useful. So is it possible to have a to, to adapt this evolution of life to codes uh, generation? Uh, first, as we said, the uh, criterion to have uh, uh, the selection of species is not useful because it is vague, ontologically goal. Every time we just learn that a species evolved because of something completely impossible to imagine, that the nose was longer than because of the, the flowers. For, is this for the, the, how we call that, the butterfly? The butterfly, the, the nose, the, who survived the nose was longer because the, the, the flowers are start, start to be deeper and uh, therefore the, the butterfly with short nose, they cannot survive, so the, the butterfly with longer nose survive. But in this case, the flowers become deeper and deeper and, and, and at the end, we don't understand very f well the usefulness of the, of the project. Uh, but regarding codes, uh, can we create a digital ecosystem where we have a specified, uh, basically, uh, rules for the codes to, to fight each other? The other question is, uh, is it possible to have a large enough ecosystem? Because you, if we have only uh, two or three codes competing, it won't be very useful. You have something large enough. Uh, another problem, how can we verify Verify, I mean certify, imagine that all these programs generated randomly are used to, uh, to control uh, your car or the airplane where you are, where you, when you are traveling. You would like, at the minimum, that to be certified. Recently, the car, uh, Google car, uh, just run over uh, a woman because the case that the woman was not at the right place, was not uh, in the program. I'm concerned that it's something uh, is not existing. Let's run uh, on it. But now uh, I would like to compare the power of life compared to the, po the, power, the power of our computers. We have the rise of artificial intelligence has been done uh, because we had the application of Moore law since three decades. Uh, when I say three decades, I would say four decades. So we arrived to a tremendous power of computational power. All the ideas about deep learning, things like that, about neural network, are from the 60s. But from the 60s, uh, basically, there was less, uh, less computational power in a computer than in this, uh, no, that is already too sophisticated. Uh, than in this key, without the electronic part. So it was meaning less to, to imagine we could do deep learning with uh, basically a screwdriver. But now it is possible. But let's compare with life. Uh, everybody has uh, tried this. Uh, I tried this when I was young. You take a liter of uh, water, sea water, and just you have a microscope. You look at uh, there are small animals or small shrimps or things something like that. And, they are and it's like an ecosystem. This is one liter. And you can imagine that uh, one day, one day, all the shrimps, uh, they, they, they are going <coughs> together. The bacteria, the bacteria, the, the main source of mutation are the bacteria, the bacteria, and you generate one kilobyte of uh, new muted core code ev per liter per day. That's an that assumption. Uh, why uh, this assumption? In fact, it is true. It is true. Uh, when I did the first uh, talk, I uh, was just by random, and in fact, was a proof that it was true. So you have one kilobyte of code every day per liter, and basically life appeared 1,000 billion days ago. Uh, the ocean volume of ocean is one billion of cubic kilometers, and 
Every cubic kilometer is 1,000 billion liters. I check it again, the, the math are correct. Therefore, there is a part, so the user, uh, the user, uh, the sp user space of life on Earth is a, a space of 10 to 36 kilobytes. And this is a, a lot. I can tell you it is really a lot. Imagine that you have a magic computer that you can store one byte, yes, exactly, one byte <coughs> per atom. 10 to 36 kilobytes will need a, a mountain of the size of Everest with one kilobyte per, per atom. And uh, if you look at the quantity of information generated by mankind, oh it's a, this talk is of two years old, so the, you have to multiply by 100, of course. So it is an order of less than, a, as we say, a mole of information. A mole information will be uh, 10 to 33. Here it is 10 to 18. This is equivalent in our model to store all this information in a sun grain of a mass of 10 to minus 8 kilograms. So it's you can do small. And if you look, because most of the information created by mankind is uh, streaming, is uh, videos, uh, is uh, of course books, is uh, encyclopedia. Uh, but if you look at the code, the working code, executable code, it is much less the number of executable codes. In fact, they are replicated, but the number of original executable uh, line of codes created by computer scientists is 100 gigabyte, which will be, compared to that, less than a nano drop of air. Not a drop of air, a nano drop of air. So it's, uh, so this is just... Uh, Ah, here, because I was expecting to, talk, to speak during, uh, during one hour, therefore I don't have enough material, so this is something that has nothing to do with the discussion. Uh, but anyhow, it, it shed light on the, on the complexity of life. Uh, the human, compared to the human being, the human being has a DNA of equivalent of 6 gigabits. Of, uh, of information, and uh, one baby, uh, when, when the, there is a new baby, uh, this is part, this is my grandpa part, uh, you have a new baby coming, and basically it had to share 20,000 coding genes either coming from mother or from the father. And uh, therefore, if there's only two possibilities, one possibility, two possibilities, I mean, father from father or from mother, the, the complexity added to mankind by a baby is 20 kilobits. Uh, it is less than the quantity of information contained in the SMS or in the, in the tweet you use to. Uh, to uh, to announce the, the birth of the, of the kid. Don't tell that to your children. <laughs> I did that and it was a mistake. Uh, if you take a vegetable, or something strange, a vegetable have a DNA which is larger than the DNA of, uh, of mammals, which is 20 gigabits. Or the reason, well nobody knows the reason of course, but the Potential reason is the fact that there's a change of climate which occurs very frequently on, on, on Earth. The, the animals can move and uh, the vegetal cannot move by definition. Therefore, they have to find their gen. Ah, there is one gen against uh, warming or one gen against uh, freezing and uh, to, activate, uh, to activate it. Therefore, every time there is a species tension, you remove 20 gigabit to life complexity and every time there is a birth, you add only 20 kilobit. So be careful uh, when you walk, don't walk on, on, on grass before checking, it is not... Uh, 
uh, something which is under extinction. Uh, the temporary uh, conclusion. Uh, the temporary conclusion that it's a good news for us that at least that we cannot expect even in two t in two, uh, 2030 that uh, artificial intelligence will be able to sever its tie with mankind. Not, not yet. To do math, yes, that's that I believe, I do believe, but to, uh, to, uh, to, to evolve independently, you should not expect. Uh, every time you show there is advertisement about the miracle of artificial intelligence, you have to have a small thought about the, all the engineers, the mathematicians, the, inf the computer scientists who work to make this happen. And uh, this is not only uh, the training of a neural network which is uh, and work. You have a lot of things to do in order to have a, to have a, a result. Uh, OK, well the bad news is that if we want to get rid of our civilization, uh, of course, there are, all, there are less complex ways to, uh, to, to, to succeed. Uh, ah, yes, yes uh, all this is because uh, just check. Yes, uh, uh, not too late. So in case uh, I was too long, I still have an uh, That's what I just said, that this is uh, what will say uh, Shannon to Turing, because we, we consider Turing invented artificial intelligence, to tell, oh, yes, your thing is very great, but uh, there are limitations, be careful. Uh, and in fact, it is not completely true because Shannon also worked on artificial intelligence and, and uh, he designed uh, one of the first machines to help uh, for maze escape, for something with the mechanical mice. Before I thought it was a real mice, but basically, because in the picture it was not clear. And also designed a mind reading machine. So, the mind reading machine is basic to take advantage that the, the human brain is not a good source of randomness to be able to predict what uh, is next move. It works very well. Uh, the, of course, it's an uh, illustration. Ah. So this is an exercise because uh, so, 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 so maybe if you think it's too boring, you can think about this uh, small exercise. This is uh, an, an exercise. It is uh, what Turing will have replied to, uh, to Shannon. Imagine the following problem. You can think by, your, by yourself during the rest of the talk. You have a monastery on the top of Everest, and there are monks. They are living there since uh, ever. Their everyday job is to predict the weather of tomorrow via artificial intelligence. You have the question, God accepts only a finite number of mistakes. And since you, 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 you have an infinite number of days, and uh, before doomsday, uh, God is counting, and if it is uh, more than uh, finite, it won't be it won't be happy. Uh, there is a bi we consider to simplify our lives a bin binary weather, zero for bad weather, one for nice weather. The only data set is uh, for each monk at every day is a finite sequence of past weather and prediction. The hint, the monks have to make a choice. You can think so during the, the talk. Uh, now I'm going to go into more involved uh, research, less, less philosophical, uh, there will be less, uh, less uh, story about life evolution, things like that. Anyhow, I'm still going to talk about cats and dogs. And the question is, is there a limit to learnability? Or cats and dogs, uh, because basically the symbol of artificial intelligence is uh, the most successful, striking success of artificial intelligence is how to detect there is a cat or a dog in a picture. Of course, no, it's more than that, fortunately. Uh, so the question, what I would like to do, I will ask my neural network to be able, or my machine learning system, to be able to discover an algorithm, a simple algorithm. Of course, uh, because I have no way, I have no algorithm, 
to, uh, to, to detect if there is a cat or a dog in a picture. In fact, what I say is wrong, because a neural network is an algorithm. So there is some, uh, some mutation. But my question, what will be the consequence if machine learning will be incapable to discover simple algorithm? First, it is not a very interesting result, because, as you said, it is completely pointless to use machine learning or artificial intelligence to mimic algorithm. If you have an algorithm, don't try to, to make uh, machine learning, uh, deep learning uh, stuff, just use it. Uh, in fact, if it fails, it will be the only case when we have a, a polynomial uh, p equal mp. Because if you ask uh, a machine to discover a polynomial algorithm, it will find a non-polynomial uh, solution, something which will converge very slowly. But in fact, it is not that uh, useless to ask the question, because if the machine is not able to detect or to an, an algorithm to apply it, it means that on some problem, it will not be able to converge. Uh, because some problem will need that the data will be pre-processed by a specific algorithm. If the machine is not able to detect that you have to process the, the data, you will have poor convergence. If the machine will able to detect there is an algorithm need to be applied and basically to mimic the, the algorithm to have good convergence, you will, you will, we will have a universal solution and of course we will be back to the beginning of the talk that we have a universal machine that solves all problems. So the question is uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, capable, capable to detect simple algorithm? And in fact the candidate to in fact, it, it, the, the answer is no. And there are problems where, the, where deep learning cannot converge to a solution. The candidate is sorting Fourier transform. For example, the, the classic example is the wave led the, the convolution. You need to basically to implement the convolution. The system without the convolution is not able to detect. You have to put at zero many coefficients and uh, you will not converge properly. Pattern matching. Pattern matching is something that you cannot do very well. Uh, tree on graph structure, this is a consequence of pattern matching. And parity function has been proven that parity function, that the deep learning cannot converge to a solution. Parity function is you have a sequence of n bit and the ground truth is one bit. For example, it's a parity of the number of, uh, of uh, non-zero bit. And uh, you take a random uh, parity function, then the, your system, how long you, you train it, will give an average error of one half. It means that uh, it won't converge and will give not even give a, a clue about the, the, the correct answer. The first important point is the fact that a neural network is a Turing machine. There are some limits, we have to be careful because there's some question about the, the memory. Therefore, you have to uh, consider need a recurrent neural network. Uh, but basically, this means that if you have an algorithm, just by adjusting the weight in your uh, neural network, you can implement the algorithm. But of course the question is that machine uh, learning is not programming, it is training. And training via stochastic uh, gradient descent can be training by other, other means, but for deep learning it is training. We have already a free talk about this, therefore, but I want to show you because I will show you some cats and dogs. And this is a nice part of my talk, it shows cats. Basically, you can see a neural network like a, a box 
with a uh, neural network with weights, it's matrices, we're we going to more sophisticated description, but basically, view from outside, it will look like a coffee machine. Uh, if you consider this, uh, this design, of course, you have other designs. Uh, and uh, all the weight of your neural networks are in the machine. So you show a cat, it will, it will answer you cat. It will answer you cat with probably with a weight. Uh, cat with probability 100%, 90%. You show you another cat. Even this cat, you see this cat is very troubling. Uh, it's a cat. Of course, you have to challenge the system. You show a dog. It shows a dog. Uh, here, I don't know what will be the result, but so I assume that it will say 50% cat, 50% dog. Yes, uh, there's no limit to human imagination to fool a machine. <laughs> But how it works, basically you enter uh, an image. An image is a sequence of uh, numbers. It can be one million numbers. Here, I just put uh, 10 numbers. The machine produces a prediction with the neural network which is inside. And knowing that the true result is uh, 56, it will compute the difference between the true, the ground truth, and the prediction. And during the training phase, it will adjust the coefficient inside the machine so that it will be always closer and closer to the, to the ground truth, but every time we change the, 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 the training image, therefore it will be a gradient descent, and we say stochastic descent because the image we select is always random. So it is stochastic, it will be like that. And it's a gradient stochastic machine uh, descent. You simplify your life, you consider that you know the result. You compute the gradient, you know this is just a system <coughs> with, mat with matrix and uh, some activation function, something which is mathematically completely trivial. You can compute the gradient and then adjust the weight according to the gradient of the loss function, so that uh, you reduce, you, you, you take the weight, the gradient, in the negative way, so that you expect to reduce the error, the, 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 the average error. Here there are two examples. One example with uh, when you adjust, uh, when you adjust the, the the gradient vector with this norm, but it has nothing. It's not interesting. And the question, the big question I'm going to ask myself, uh, you too, basically, can we train a machine, neural network, to extract the maximum of two numbers? So, so this is not a question of cats, not a question of dog, not a question to supersede humanity. Mankind is, I want to have two numbers, I want to be able to extract the maximum of two numbers, something which is very simple. Uh, it turns out that you have this expression for the maximum of two numbers. And this expression, in fact, is a neural network. Because if you express it as a neural network, you use as the, the uh, activation function, the, the activation function everybody uses in theory that nobody uses in practice, is the ReLU. And uh, it has this matching representation. This means that I always take the positive part of the vector, and that I apply in the, the, the again another matrix, and this is equal to the maximum, uh, twice the maximum, the two numbers. Therefore, it satisfies the property that uh, the neural networks is a Turing machine, and it can extract the maximum of two numbers, and not with without too much effort, even at that time, in the afternoon, you can see that you can extract the maximum more than two numbers, four numbers. Here, I uh, extrapolate the case of eight numbers. So, just basically, you have a, you have a specific uh, 
uh, block to extract the maximum two numbers, you have a rec recursion way to, to extract the maximum of any numbers. So nothing, nothing, spe nothing special. You take log n layers. It's, uh, it's very simple. Uh, there are several, there are several ways to adjust this uh, recursive, uh, not recursive, not recursive, <coughs> this neural network. Because <coughs> instead you can take the maximum of the numbers and separate what is above and below, but you can mix it. And in fact, it is not, uh, it, it, it is not innocent. You have many combinations of the neural network to give you the correct answer. So maybe it is a reason why we will see some problem. First, how good is a gradient descent? First, it is absolutely impossible, even for a simple problem, to, to get the optimal, the optimal neural network. You will always end on a local minima. It is a gradient descent. The reason you go down, go down, at some moment it stops because it's just on a local minima. It is not necessarily the global minima. Oh, there are a lot of stories that uh, the, you, you, you shake out the system, you fail, and then you go, be, uh, uh, you go on, uh, lower, but it's always the same story. Uh, uh, you, you will never, you have a, not a lot of chance to end on the local minimum. Even worse, since we are on a huge dimension, you can have vicious saddle points. So the point where basically it is very unstable, but in fact uh, you go one step here, and then up you go there, and then and you just do a cycle around the side the saddle point. Uh, it is in theory, but in practice uh, nobody has seen that. Uh, if the local minima are close to each other, in uh, some definition of closeness, it's good. If the local minima are far from each other, this is bad. So, good, they are very close. Far from each other, very bad. Uh, so the question, how training can reach a good weight vector, a good local minima? So the weight vector, and now it is something, I will explain the game. You, I will take a neural network, but uh, I'm not going to take uh, uh, numbers. I'm not going to take cats. You know what? Uh, you, if you had a, a small kitten, the first time you put the small kitten on a mirror and it show its uh, image, <coughs> it, it, it's a panic. So what I, I do the same with a neural network. I put a neural network in front against another neural network. It is known, it is adversarial. In this case, it's simple. I assume that the ground truth is given by a neural network, another neural network. And I will uh, select uh, the weight of this ground truth neural network at random, and I will never touch them. And uh, as I said, there are many if you have, a, 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 for the root of the loss function, you have many, many competitors, because you have many permutations of lines, colons, that are possible candidates for being the optimal neural network. Therefore, the loss function has a number of roots, which is factorial n, which is, which is big, basically, because it's n is one million, it's big. Uh, so the exercise, you take an aquarium of large dimension and this will be the place where you select your, your, uh, the root of your uh, loss function. In fact, the roots of loss function are correlated, but in this case, you assume they are not correlated at all, which is sufficient for the, for the result. And you define a simple loss function that has nothing to do with the gradient descent which is that this product, for example. We can take something more complicated, but it is, in fact, very easy to do the math on this. And you prove that basically there is a quasi-black hole effect that the, the minimum 
the local minimum is not a global minima, but is something which is centroid of the global minima. Each of these points is a global minima. But the local minima, it is a centroid, and it's always converged to this local minima, which is not a good local minima, but it will always converge to this, uh, to th to this one. Oh, there are some experiments that are Ah, oh, it is working, yes. Uh, yes, uh, it's not very interesting. It just so that uh, when you have less than four, you are in dimension 10, if you have less four global minima, it works very well. It's always, uh, gradient descent always converges to the, to the global minim minima, but if you take 10, for example, then it will converge to the centroid. Something which looks like the centroid, which is not the centroid, it's something which is uh, more complicated. But if you look asymptotically, when the dimension increases, it, it tends to the centroid. Quick question, is this all now for the maximum? No, no, this, uh, this is for any kind of... Uh, and then we'll look at uh, how it applies the maximum. This is not for the maximum, it is a more general uh, uh, proof for any uh, training and uh, neural network whose ground trough is given by another neural network whose coefficient is selected randomly. And uh, this is the element of proof that basically you show that the gradient with high probability, the gradient converge to the origin, in fact, converge to the average, the centroid of the, of the, of the root, and that the centroid, ah, look at that. How long you can look at that without, uh, ah, it worked. <laughs> uh, just to, 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 to prove that the function is convex with high probability uh, around the centroid. Therefore, if you enter the centroid, you will never escape. If you enter the vicinity of the story, you never uh, escape. Uh, in fact, to, to this proof works for every, uh, if, if the roots are correlated with the case, work for many metrics. But uh, you have to be careful, in this case, it's our loss function is smooth. And in fact, the loss function is not smooth, it's something very complicated. Therefore, it is, we cannot say that it is true for the real gradient descent in uh, for neural network. But assume that it is true. Uh, this basic tells you that if you convert to the centroid, if the average, if the centroid is not zero, then by the law of large number, you will do an error, but the error you will do will be basically, uh, will fade away compared to the, to, 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 to the, 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 the length of the, of, uh, uh, the length of the modulus of the, uh, of the centroid, the normal centroid. Uh, I mean that if I take, I take a text vector and I apply the text vector x to the real uh, neural network, I will be close to, if I compare with the, what I will get with the centroid uh, neural network, I will have something which will be very close via square root of n. In fact, is a, since this is of order n, so the error is of the order 1 over square root of n, n being the dimension, it will be very close, radically. And the problem happens if, uh, if your centroid is zero, or very close to zero. This is a bad news. In this case, therefore, the error, the relative error you will do, <laughs> oh, that's impressive. Uh, the relative error you will do compared with the exact uh, prediction uh, will be too important in the relative error. In fact, it will be infinite. And if you took the maximum, the maximum, the coefficient, the average of the, you have to take the average of the coefficient of the, of, of, uh, of the matrix, you see that the average coefficient is zero. 
So you expect that the max uh, finding will be a special case where basically the centroid will be zero. And therefore you will you expect not good result. And it turns out that many algorithms, uh, algorithms on sign numbers, are the, have this property that we call the zero mean weight. Uh, oh, uh, here it is uh, the training over the max. So all this, uh, I trained nine neural network randomly selected and the position in the, in the plan is that the basically the vector of uh, their prediction on two test vectors that have uh, I don't touch. And the red arrow is the ground truth. So it works well for two numbers. So two numbers, it converges well. Uh, what's Four numbers, it converges but uh, less well. And then uh, eight, 16, 32, there is uh, this effect of the, that we assume to be the effect of the zero mean weight property, starts to be uh, a problem. And to compare, we, we try uh, a zero mean weight random neural network, not the maximum uh, random uh, neural network, and it turns out that uh, what is done that is going uh, very bad. In comparison, if you take a non-zero mean weight uh, function, uh, it converges because it's basically the low Lorentz number, number. You, there is no nothing. Uh, it's working. It's working very well. So basically, if this is true. Because, uh, as I said, the, the, the I use a toy model to, 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 to show it uh, very quickly. Uh, if it's true, it means that uh, there is a swamp area in the learning if you have a problem. And if you are gradient descent, go into the area that I call the swamp area, where the coefficient are very, has a weight zero. Weight uh, can be the mean weight, can be the, the third. Uh, third moment weight, it can be anything like that, then it doesn't then it doesn't converge, it can be blocked. And the convergence will be very poor. And if the solution, the optimal minimum optimal uh, uh, network are is in this area, then you can expect that it will it won't converge. It means that your system won't be able to to uh, find the minimum of uh, several numbers. Now there is a kind of equivalence, the conclusion. The conclusion can we learn learnability. So there is a kind of equivalence of programming and learning. Uh, we know that from Turing that uh, the program termination is undecidable in general. So we can expect that the learning convergence may also be undecidable in general. There are some uh, propositions in, uh, in this area. Uh, it's even in the problem with this, uh, it is easy to, uh, to state that the program is not, will not terminate, but uh, there's another difficulty is how to define a bad convergence that does not converge uh, well. Of course, this is another difficulty. Uh, but we know that we can prove that some program termi terminates, fortunately. For example, the program is controlling your, your plane or your car. It is proven to terminate, sometimes. Uh, therefore, can we hope to have some way, in some ca special case, to detect that a, program, that a, a problem will not converge well? And how is it possible to learn uh, to train neural network to detect which algorithm you should use in order to, to escape the swamp area. Uh, there was also the question that I was uh, asking that Stefan 
start to look at is uh, can we train neural network to detect which physical laws apply to uh, obtain some physical measures. You have some measure in astrophysics, but you don't, uh, you don't know how to, to see what is the sequence of physical law to apply, or which physical, is there, is there a new physical law? And, uh, and this is a very interesting question, because uh, uh, if we consider the physical law is like a basic algorithm, so just a writing, it may be also difficult to uh, to uh, to, uh, to find the physic the basic physical laws, but this is a, a question. Uh, so that's that was all what I was uh, wanted to to show you. Uh, if you want to know the solution of the problem for the monks, uh, it is uh, the, there are one slide after, but uh, you I think you know the answer already, so I'm not going to to go into these slides. <laughs> Questions? Uh, in your comparison between uh, life, uh, evolution, and uh, AI and machine learning, as you say, life has no goal, no purpose uh, of evolution that could be, you know, uh, <laughs> stated in, uh, by Darwin, um, but uh, AI surely has uh, one goal, you, you, you uh, tell your machine what you want it to achieve, right? So uh, would that make a huge difference? Because you, you say that life uh, or evolution has done a lot of computations, basically. You but use less computation. Yeah. <laughs> No particular direction. So, is it uh, could that make AI more, you know, help it uh, uh, run faster? And <laughs> yes, I, I agree. And the question was, uh, can artificial intelligence get rid of uh, of human intervention? That was a basic question. So you give the answer. If you are able, if a man, a human is able to give the rules. It's, uh, if it works, of course it is working. But if you are going very vague rules, you will need more computation. If uh, you, uh, if you, if basically you don't, don't know the rules you have to give, you know the famous expression, there's a command, do what I mean on the computer, and uh, because when you want to debug a program, and at the end you, you are fed up, you write, do what I mean, and it doesn't work. <laughs> So in this case, is what is the minimal quantity of information to have the something working? That I don't know. This is not sufficient to say, uh, make me happy, I think. No other questions? It's the end of the day? <laughs> yes, it's the okay. end of the day, but <laughs> I, had so I had predicted that. <laughs> One small question, um, maybe it's naive, but in all of these problems where you ask for exact precision, like say, uh, are these two numbers equal? Something to be even simpler than the maximum problem. I mean, there is no hope in any case that a gradient descent algorithm could converge to it because it would require infinite numerical precision. Hmm? Is this is kind of what you are, is this kind of a how does, this, uh, how does this relate to what you actually say, say in your talk? Uh, you, 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 no, what I, I said is if I need an approximation of uh, the algorithm... Uh, yeah, but it doesn't exist an approximation of... No, no, an approximation of, uh, of the, for example, an approximation of sorting, approximation of extracting the, the maximum, and it will help to... Uh, to find the, 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 the correct uh, neural network. Then I'm happy. If I have uh, something to give me the maximum with uh, an error of, of I don't know five uh, percent, uh, beyond what I could be expect with the present uh, deep learning uh, system. I, I, I mean, if but if the maximum between two numbers, I don't even know how to either you're right or not. So what does it what does it mean? Five? Oh, I, 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 if I take as an example. Uh, assume that it is impossible to find the convolution algorithm, an algorithm that makes a convolution. But 
I know that I need it to be able to recognize a cat because it has been designed with a convolution algorithm. Uh, if I train my neural network on the picture of cat without this convolution algorithm uh, inside, it won't work. It won't converge. Uh, it's a bet because I never tried. Uh, if you have the convolution algorithm, but with not exactly the convolution algorithm, but something which is very close, it will, it will find the, 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 the cat at the end because you, use, you will just add the error of your imitation of the convolution algorithm to the error you have uh, when you have already built in the weight of the neural network your convolution algorithm. Because also the convolution algorithm is a neural network, basically you force some coefficient to be zero and you force some other coefficient to be identical in, translas in translation. That is the convolution uh, uh, algorithm. You force it, it works well. If your system will be able to discover that you need to have the coefficient to be zero and the non-zero coefficient to be uh, identical by translation, then you will be able to find the, that there is a cat in the, in the picture and uh, that there, 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 there is a dog in the, in, in the picture. You will just add the error of your fake convolution algorithm. It's just to, to say that uh, you need to prepare your data on your neural network, equivalently, in order to have the good convergence. Because you don't know, if you don't know at the very beginning, then you have to use a convolution. The guy who discovered the convolution is a, a very smart guy, and uh, maybe, maybe, maybe people find it, but it is something he has, the machine could not discover, if this, this is true. Sorry. Uh, what happens if you try to learn Max with a, a, a network with many hidden units? So not just uh, four, but you know, hundreds. Because the usual... Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I see, uh, uh, in fact, I tried, no, it doesn't work. But maybe my, my neural network was not good. No, it doesn't work. What will work is to have the recurrent neural network, which is something another story. It means that you, in, you inject the data. Uh, well, I mean, I may be surprising because people usually say that if you have a number of units you know, less than or comparable to the amount of data, then there can be lots of local minima, but as you take many more units, you don't have these bad local minima. If you add many layers, you will augment not the not number of... Not, not layer, it could still be ah, sorry, I did not understand the question. It could, it could still be two layers, but many units, and many hidden units in that second layer. Many units? Ah, you mean that you increase the dimension of the container? Ah! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> In the flavor, I don't have a definite answer for that. In fact, I have no definite answer. Don't ask any further question, by the way. Is, uh, I don't have a definite answer, but I will say no. You just increase the number of, of uh, possibilities and decrease the... Uh, that's, that's the limit where people would say that it should work, I think. No, in this case, you will go again to the, to the max, to the centroid, but uh, faster. And if you have the centroid for the maximum, it's not good. Now, be careful. If you try to find the maximum of num positive number, then it converts. But if you do a non-signed numbers, then it has a problem. But it is my guess for the for your question. If you increase the size of the uh, the dimension, the dimension of the of the system, no, it it, it will just uh, to what I feel. It will not uh, converge. You, 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 you add more uns unknown to converge. Uh, again, I mean, you require infinite numerical precision. Because they could always give you two numbers, 7.000001. Mm -hmm. It's always function. It's how closely does no, no. it. But the thing is, you can never get this exact. You can always find, for any implementation, you have any fixed number of neurons, I can always find two numbers which are so close together. No, no, it's not a question of numerical... Uh, my problem is not a question of numerical accuracy. Uh, if, I, if I show you uh, 
This but there's no neural network that you can train with gradient descent that solves the next problem. This doesn't exist. No. I'm sorry. If I ask the maximum of uh, 32 numbers, and this gives me this error, I will say it's not a problem of numerical instability. It is a problem that it doesn't convert. Oh, yeah, oh because you're integers. Ah, yes, uh, uh, no, it is on, uh, on, uh, on numbers. On, there are only this finite set of numbers. No, no, yes, it's a real, uh, no, I train on real numbers. It's something so very simple. But it has nothing to do with numerical uh, instability. Ah, it's my bet. It's just, uh, it doesn't convert, it doesn't find the, 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 the magic. Uh it doesn't have to be exact, right? I mean, it's just a loss function of how close did it get to oh, the max. Right? Yeah, what does it mean? You're close to the max? Well, you have a size of the data or a standard deviation, and the error is much less than that. Yes, you don't look at the accuracy of the weight, you look at the accuracy of the answer of your neural networks when you test it with, uh, real, uh, with uh, real vectors. Because you may have neural networks who are very <coughs> far apart, but when you test a neural network, they give something very similar. No, no, it is a... Uh, What's the loss function for the max between two numbers? But What's the square of the difference between the max and what it gives? Yeah, but, but, but why? I mean, why is it if you compare two numbers that are super small, then you don't get a small error. But if you compare two numbers which are super large but still close together, um, you know... No, no, the number of between... Uh, the number is better than minus one and, and, and plus one. I, I didn't do something uh, complicated. No, no, I, I was not cheating like that. I can, I can, uh, but no. Uh, I, I, I took the random numbers, uh, 32 numbers between minus one and one, but real numbers uniformly. And there is no, no, no trick here. But I take uniformly. Uh, if I have to look for two numbers, it converts to something that will give an answer would be correct, and if I was rich enough to make, the, uh, to make it converging during uh, 100,000 years, it will go to arbitrary precision, but I'm not asking for that here. That I say, I'm not still not rich enough, by the way, but I did it uh, long uh, convergence, and these are stable, these points are st stable, completely stable. You can uh, wait for, you can uh, add uh, many uh, thousand, uh, multiply by tens of number of iteration, and they are stable. They are stable. This is a final, final result. They, are, they don't move anymore. Or they move because the learning rate is not zero, but they just uh, do the classic uh, zigzag uh, around, uh, around their value, the nothing special. But it's, uh, but maybe there is a bug. Maybe what I thought is completely wrong. That, that's a good subject of research. <laughs> yes, it was, it was strange for the maximum. So sorry, I think I... <laughs> I don't try to convince you because I am not convinced that, by the way. <laughs> right, it's the same as asking are two numbers equal? No, no, it is not the mathematical question to say that are two numbers are equal is... Uh, uh, I have a function, I enter two numbers and give me an answer and the answer. I enter 0 0.45 and a minus 0 0.3 and it give me 0 0.1. So I consider that the answer is not acceptable. It was giving me 0 0.40, 0 0.44, and I would be very happy, but there the, the error is really uh, big. Uh, really big and doesn't uh, diminish if uh, if you select uh, another initialization of your. Uh, it's not like in your case when you take any initialization, it goes to the good uh, local minima. Here, you take a new initialization, it goes to another minima which is not good, neither. No, 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 but it's no, no, no. a function problem definition. <laughs> no, it's because I explained it, you don't explain well, sorry. <laughs> but I think that you are tired. Uh, me, I can continue with the problem. Okay, nobody.
Nobody wants to see the last slide. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the last slide. So I show the last slide just to, to, to close to, to those <laughs> the last slides. I was not thinking. Uh, it's a shame. I'm a hardy. But I give, I get the, the hint, by the way. Oh, it's very simple. The monk are just using the axiom of choice. Oh, this is. And I, good, I gave a wrong uh, hint uh, because I assume that you have the, all the sequences, <laughs> all the sequence of uh, whether and oh, and prediction. In fact, you need on, only the, all the sequence of, uh, of whether with the axiom of choice. The, the monk can just figure out, ah, I have a sequence. I can fill the sequence to doomsday. I assume the doomsday is tomorrow. And, uh, and just uh, consider that uh, consider that all the, the weather next to doomsday will be bad weather. So I put zero. And then, I think I don't have the right to show you because of God, apparently. <laughs> uh, so they, they use the axiom of choice. And basically, all this sequence, they have one representant given by the axiom of choice. And the monks are giving this representant. And the relation between two sequences, two sequences are in relation if they, di they differ by a finite number of points. And therefore, they all choose the same Presentant, and the same presentant is in the same relation class of the sequence of weather. Therefore, the prediction will fail only a finite number of times, and God will be happy. Yes, but the, the, the trick is that we assume that the monks are able to manipulate infinite sequence. It was a tool, a toys, a toys example to prove that the information theory is not a complete theory because you need to apply it on the computationality of the data. This is, it was a, a toy model that with Fabien. <laughs> exactly. Don't ask me questions about, <laughs> about this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Sorry for being so long.